Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Today, I am here for my very first story time. So, if you want to know how my ex-boyfriend, boyfriend at the time, mom snitched on him, then you got to stay tuned, of course. And then she says, Did you tell her what happened? And he like, he looks at me. I look at him. All right. So, <laughs> just think about this story. It's hilarious because there was so much going into it. When I was 17, I started dating this guy that I met um, in Chicago. I'm not saying anybody's names or any descriptors. If you know me, then you know who these people are. Um, so, I started dating this guy when I was 17. You know, first time I was in love and stuff and stuff. Ugh. And... Um, just everything that I thought, you know, young love was supposed to be, that's that's what it was. And so when I went away to college, I went away to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, which was only like a good two hours away from home. So I went there. He, my mom and my mom's friend at the time and my sisters um, went with me to drop me off. And it was like super sweet and sorrowful and melancholy and shit like that. Because I was like, oh my God, like, I'm never going to see him again. So I wouldn't have draft y'all. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was just over the top unnecessary. So I get there and I'm talking to him every single day. And, you know, FaceTime wasn't a thing at that time. And Skype wasn't a thing. So a lot of our communicating is over the phone or just text messages. And so I had come home during the summer and so one day he's at my house and we're like kind of just hanging out. His cell phone was broken. So he had a flip phone and the top part of the flip was broken off. So he had no screen. He still had the buttons and he could just plug like his headphones into the bottom portion of the phone. So he was making this shit work somehow. And so whenever he would answer a call, if he didn't have the headphones in, the call would have to be on speaker. Yeah, I can't. I just I can't as I'm thinking about this. And so his mom calls him, so he can't see who's calling him. So his phone rings and he answers it right in front of me, and it's his mom. And she's like, "Hey, what you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing. I'm over at Marilyn's house." And she's like, oh, "Okay." And then she says, "Did you tell her what happened?" And he like he looks at me. I look at him. He like, "Oh, uh, mom, I gotta go." And he just hangs up the phone. So I'm just like. What you got to tell me? Like, start talking. We go outside on the back porch. I'm like, yo, what's good? Like, you got to tell me what's going on. Because your mama done already put you on blast. So you can't lie. You got to tell me what has happened. And so he like. Yeah, I don't know how to tell you this. But like, um, I've been cheating on you. And I was just like, word? Okay, cool. Okay, okay. And I was like, so for how long? And he was like, pretty much since you left. Gee, I've been in school like a whole eight months. You just want to never tell nobody nothing? Cool. So he was like, I didn't want to hurt you, but I told my mama what I did. And she was like, you know, I really like Marilyn and you need to tell her what's going on because that's not okay. The only reason I would have found out at that particular moment that I was being cheated on was because his mama blew up his spot. But I appreciate you. You wanted the real ones because you got your son together. So he was like, you know, I understand if you want me to like go home, like I'll just take the bus home, whatever. And I was like, nah, bruh, you finna hang out with me because I'm bored. I ain't got nothing else to do. I was demented at portions of my life. And so I made that man hang out with me for the rest of the day. And I was just talking real reckless, saying anything I wanted to, making him feel like crap, telling him, like, this is over, but you're going to sit here with me. And if you try to leave, I'm going to hurt you. So he stayed. And then on the ride home, I was playing Marcus Houston. Um, oh, it's a Marcus Houston song, and I can't think of it right now. Um, but it was a Marcus Houston song that was hot at the moment, and I just played it over and over again because I wanted him to feel so bad for what he had done to me. Um, and I didn't get upset. I didn't cry in that moment. But, like, later on, like, when I thought about it in retrospect, I was very hurt by the situation. Um, fast forward to my second year of college, 
the girl he had cheated on me with was a girl that he had went to high school with who was a few years older than him and they had like reconnected after high school she had kids or whatever she was not right in the head so this girl was grown like she was at least 21 when we were like or 21 22 when we were like 18 19 so she she had a little bit of sense I thought um but she didn't use it very wisely so this girl had become like really for lack of better words obsessed with me I guess because he and I were still talking to each other like they were dating but I just felt away and I was like I'm gonna still keep this person around because that's my prerogative I don't want anything from him but if I want to talk to him from time to time I would do that um and she just couldn't handle it and I was like you realize that you're the girl that he cheated on me with so like if anybody should be salty or feel any type of way, it should probably be me, but it's not. So, like, you don't get to have, you don't get to feel no type of way about this, right? I realize I'm speaking real colloquially right now, and I apologize, but this is how I'm feeling right now. Um, and so, this woman had a child. She was someone's mother, but something wasn't right with her. So, if he wouldn't talk to her, she would send him text messages and leave him voicemails of she was going to kill herself and she was going to kill her child. And then he would call me and be like, yo, this girl's kind of wigging out. And I'm like, uh-uh, I don't want to hear it because these are the choices you made. You decided to be with this person knowing that she didn't have all her marbles together. And she would do this constantly. So at the beginning of it, when she would call him and make these threats, you know, he would immediately like, okay, come over. We can hang out because he didn't know if she was really serious about what she was saying she would do to herself or her child. And then it became repetitive. Like you just really not doing that. You just saying it just to say it because you think that this is how he's going to react. And over time he got over it. And so somehow she got my number. I'm assuming she went through his phone and got my phone number out of it. And she would call me and I would hang up because I'm like, what do we need to talk about? There's absolutely nothing that we have to talk about. And I do not appreciate the fact that you are calling me. And then I kindly told him like, Hey, do me a favor. Take my number out your phone. Tell your girlfriend, do not call my phone anymore because it's rude. It's disrespectful. And I'm really trying not to come outside myself. But if she keep at it, I'm going to hurt her feelings. So he told her, you know, things started to settle down. My second year of college, I have friends come up to me and they're like, hey, Marilyn, there's this girl looking for you. And I'm like, what? Yeah, it's this girl named so-and-so, so-and-so. She's looking for you. Mind you, the girl that was looking for me, I had already met her. She seemed pretty cool. We had spoke to each other. She was a freshman. And I'm like, what's she looking for me for? Like, she know who I am. But apparently she didn't know me by name. She just knew me by face. So she was going around like, hey, do y'all know a girl named Marilyn? they like, yeah, that's our friend. they like, why you want to know? And she's like, oh, no reason. Crazy girl, freshman girl, and ex-boyfriend boy had all went to the same high school together. So they were all connected. So crazy girl had told freshman girl my name and to find out who I was. But freshman girl had already knew who I was. She just didn't know my name. So she's looking for me, going around asking my friends do they know who I am. And they're like, yeah, we know who she is. And finally, one of my friends is like, yo, she really looking for you. And I'm like, something about that don't sit well with me. Let me go find her before she finds me. So they tell me like, yo, she on the so-and-so floor uh, lounge right now by herself. So I go upstairs. I knock on the door. I'm like, hey. She's like, oh, hey. Because she knows me by face, but she doesn't know me by name. I said, I heard you've been looking for me. She was like, huh? I was like, I'm Marilyn. And she was like, oh. I was like, yeah. So I heard your friend has you asking people on campus, do you know who I am? And I said, and it's not cool because if I was somebody else, I would have came in here and I probably would have, you know, done some things that would not be smart of me. I said, but for whatever reason, she has you looking for me. I said, you should do yourself a favor and stop. I said, because if you continue this, I'm going to have to take care of this. However, I need to take care of it. I said, and this is not a battle for you to fight. This is a battle for her to fight. And she was like, you know, I'm sorry. We up the bam. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, if this is all over some boy, I said, he ain't taking care of neither one of us. He ain't paying my tuition. He ain't putting nothing on my meal plan. He ain't buying my clothes. He ain't putting money in my bank account. And he sure as hell ain't doing none of that stuff for her. I said, so your friend with her real grown ass needs to get it together and stop. Thought it had died down. Definitely had not. So um, 
she comes back and then she calls my phone one day and I'm just like, I don't answer because I'm in class. I read, I hear my voicemail later. And she like, oh, I just want to give you advice. He's a terrible person. So then I call her. I had a friend with me at the time. I called her. I said, do me a favor. Don't you ever call my phone anymore. I said, because you are a miserable, tactless, uh, self-conscious, insecure woman, and you need help. I said, you got issues that go far beyond this. I said, and although I'm younger than you, I clearly have more sense than you, baby girl. I said, so do yourself a favor. Don't look for me. Don't call me. I said, because I'm going to hurt your feelings, and you really ain't going to like what I'm going to say to you. Click. My friend was like, oh, my God, I ain't never really seen you like that. I was like, come on. It's just a time and place for people to do that. And where I'm from, you don't go looking for people. You don't call people constantly, incessantly, because it makes you come off like a crazy person, which... I'm pretty sure she was at that time. Like, she just wasn't right in the head. I never heard from the child again. Um, Me and the ex-boyfriend, boyfriend boyfriend at the time guy, we had, like, fell out for other reasons, other very uh, serious reasons. And I kind of told him, like, I never, ever want to have anything to do with you. I never want to talk to you ever again. Fast forward a few years back, we uh, reconnected or whatever. And, um... You know, that's that's another story for another day. But I was just like, your mama blew up your spot. So, you know, I don't know if anybody has ever had this happen to you. I really feel like it should just be a lifetime movie and I might just have to write that, you know, do what you need to do. Um, but if you have a story similar to me, leave a comment below. Make sure you thumbs up the video and make sure you subscribe to my channel because if you all like story times, I will put more out there because... When I think about it, my life is wild, y'all. You know, I grew up a little bit. So, until next time, and I'll see y'all later. Well, you married? Yes. How many times? About 15. Okay. <laughs>